Hello, this is the first of, tu of two tutorials on the CQP web collocation system. Uh, in this first video I'm going to talk a bit about uh, the collocation options screen, uh, which is the screen that we have to use to do the first step of the collocation procedure, and then in the second tutorial I will talk about the collocation screen itself and the controls that are available there. So collocation, like uh, many other things, starts with a query. So I shall uh, do a query for something. Um, why not a query for the word something? Uh, so we run a query, get a result, and then the collocation uh, tool is accessed from this menu, as most things are. There's collocations, and click go. And this is the collocation options screen, and this is the first thing that you uh, uh, you come to uh, when you uh, w when you select the collocation options. Now, to understand what's going on here, you have to understand a bit about what collocation is and how CQP Web does it. Collocation is, of course word co-occurrences. But what that means in the context of CQP Web as a tool is it means we are looking for words that occur uh, especially frequently in the context of the query that we just did. Now in order to work out what's especially frequent, CQP Web needs to do a comparison of frequency lists. One frequency list that it uses is the frequency list for the whole corpus which exists already, but it also has to build a frequency list for the vicinity of the query that um, is being analysed. And that's what we're looking at here. We're looking at the options for building that frequency list for what is nearby the query you've just done. And that's why the button down here says Create Collocation Database. Sorry, create collocation database uh, because the collocation database is what I've just said. It's the frequency list of things nearby. And then on the next screen, once you click that button, uh, you um, you see the results of the comparison between that frequency list in the collocation database that you've just created and the general frequency list for the corpus as a whole. So that's how it works. And that should make it clear what the options you have on this screen, which you have to choose before you go on, um, what effect that they have. Now, most of the time you will not have to worry about these because the defaults are sensible, so most of the time it's fine to accept the defaults and just move on. However, for advanced use of collocation, you do need to understand what uh, the different bits of this uh, screen do and what the different options mean. So let's look at uh, let, let's look at this first bit here, which says include annotation. Given what I was just saying about the frequency list, um, you sh it should be fairly easy to see what this does. Um, we are building, remember, a database of what is nearby the thing that you searched for, and we know that. Uh, in CQP Web, words have annotations. So what it's asking you here is, do you want to build a database of just the words nearby, or do you want to build a database of the annotations as well? Um, and if you include the annotations here, then on the next screen, you will have the option to do collocations on any of these things. So for example, if you want to do your collocation analysis using lemmas rather than words, or if you want to do collocation on grammatical tags, such as the simple tag or the part of speech tag, then if you've included them in the database, you will be able to. If you haven't included them in the database, then you can't, and you would have to come back to this screen and start again, build another database. Hope that makes sense. For each of the available word level annotations, and in this corpus, as you can see, there are five, so that's a grand total of six things, counting the words, which are automatically included. Uh, the words are automatically included, but each of the other things you can choose to include or exclude. Um, if you've done a query that has lots and lots of answers, uh, then including more things will make the next stage run more slowly, but most of the time you won't notice the time difference. Uh, as you can see, I haven't clicked on anything yet, by default 
only one annotation is included which is the primary annotation and the primary annotation is usually set up to be a part of speech tag although uh, your system administrator might change that. Uh, let's say for the sake of argument that as well as part of speech tag I want to include simple tag and I want to include lemma. The second setting here is the maximum window span. The span is the number of words before and after the thing that you search for that will be included in the collocation analysis. This says maximum window span and you can understand why this is because all the words around your query have to be included in the collocation database um, so obviously the maximum window that you can look at is limited by what's in the database and that's what you're choosing here. The default is 5. If you choose 5 here then on the next screen you will have the option of going up to five words before and five words after. You don't have to, you will be able to on the next screen choose a number lower than five but you won't be able to choose a number higher than five. If you think you might want to look at numbers higher than five then you need to turn this up. Uh, I'm going to say six just for the sake of argument. Uh, and that's pretty much all there is on this screen. So having done that I click create collocation database and it hums away for a while and then it gives us our collocation. Uh, I'm not going to talk about this screen in detail because that's a whole other tutorial but let me just point out the options that are affected by what we just chose. You can see here that in this control here collocation based on we only have word form plus the annotations that were selected on the previous screen. Moreover, in the collocation window from and collocation window to, you can see the default is three to the left, three to the right, but the maximum is whatever the maximum and minimum is whatever I said on the previous screen. So because I selected six, this menu runs from six to the left to six to the right, and so does that one. So that's the basic use of the collocation options screen. The only other thing that is worth mentioning is what happens when you use a query that has been restricted to a subset of the corpus. Uh, and let me do this. I'm going to go new query. So let's do a query for, oh no, let's do a restricted query. If we do a restricted query for something, and let's say we want it in, oh, I don't know. Um, these three corpora. I don't know why those three, just for the sake of argument. So let's run that query. And go to collocations. You'll note that there is something there that was not there before, and that's this notice. This warning. Why is that warning there? Well, remember what I said collocation does. It compares a frequency list around the thing that you've searched for for a frequency list for the corpus as a whole. But in this case, because we were only searching inside a subsection of the corpus, then uh, we don't have a frequency list for that subsection of the corpus. And so in that case, we need to not only build the frequency list for the database, we also need to build the frequency list for the section of the corpus that we searched in in the first place. And that's what this message says. The current set of hits was retrieved from a subpart of the corpus, 3.4 million words. No cached frequency data was found, because sometimes if someone's done that same search before, then there might be a frequency list already built and available in memory. So no cached frequency data was found, and frequency lists for the relevant part of the corpus will have to be compiled in order to provide accurate measures of collocational strength. This will increase the time needed for the calculation. Please be patient. Well, let's run it and see exactly how much time it does take. Again, let's include lemma and simple tag for the sake of argument, and let's increase it to six. Um, so this is a three million word section of the corpus. How long does that extend the running time by? So you can see that in this situation it is perceptibly taking longer. 
uh, as a general rule, compiling frequency lists is one of the things that takes CQP Web longest to do. But it is doing it, bit by bit. There we go. So a slightly annoying wait, but not too long as these things go. Now that was a 3 million word subcorpus, or a 3 million word section of the corpus rather. What happens if you use a really big section of the corpus? Well, to find a really big subsection we need a bigger corpus, so for that I'm going to switch to the Early English Books Online corpus and use Restricted Query and I'm going to say let's search in the half century equals 1500 to 1549 because if I remember correctly that's about 27 million words. Uh, so let's do a query lemma of happen that's just what I happen to think of. Collocations we've now got a different memory message. This is because we've got a 27, well 27.5 million word subsection of the corpus and again no cached frequency data was found. Um, now it says depending on the size of the subcorpus this may take several minutes and will use a lot of disk space. Yes it's, it's quite heavy going and you might be sat here for quite a while. So it gives you the option. It says alternatively you can use the frequency lists for the main corpus. Uh, so this is EBOR which is uh, 1.2 billion words. So what it's saying is that you can use the frequency lists for the full thing uh, in order to represent the frequency list that we don't have for this 27 million word section. So the results are less precise because this 27 million word section might be different to the full 1.2 billion word thing. But as it says it will run faster and this is a valid option if word frequencies are relatively homogeneous across the corpus. What that means is relatively homogeneous, what it means is that if your corpus consists of several radically different types of text that are completely different from one another, then your statistics might go wonky if you use the main frequency, corpus frequency list. But let's take a look, use main corpus frequency lists, let's use that option so that we don't generate the frequency lists. Uh, let's leave the default options in this case and let's create collocation database. Because it was quite a big query, it's still taking a while, but it won't take several minutes. It should be a handful of seconds. There we go. Uh, in fact, it was 12 seconds, 12.451 seconds. Um, but what if we have something even bigger than that? Well, note that if I go back you can see that for this corpus 27.5 million words you have the option to compile accurate frequency lists. You could select this option press the button and then go and do something else and come back. Now because frequency lists are kept in cache if you do that once then subsequent times you shouldn't get asked that question here. It should just appear normal if the frequency list is in cache. Um, so you are given the option to compile the accurate frequency list just in case you're willing to do that to accept the fact that it's going to take quite a few minutes this time but it'll be faster next time. Sometimes however we don't give you that option. If I go uh, back and if I go back to the uh, new query uh, let's do happen again but let's do it in a much much bigger section of the corpus. If I pick 1600 to 1649, which is there. This is huge. This is 300, 400 million words. So even the search itself will take a little bit of time. Oh, not that much time though, only 1.21 seconds. Collocations. This time the warning message is flat. It says, this is too much text for frequency lists to be compiled on the fly. How much was it? Uh, 325 million words. So because it's too much, you know, we're not 
going to that the system is not going to let you compile a frequency list for 325 million words instead it says the frequency list for the main corpus will be used instead um, so if you're if you're looking at uh, that bigger subsection of the corpus you will actually be stopped from uh, creating a 325 million word subcorpuses frequency list because that could run for days and days depending on how fast the machinery at the other end of the CQP web interface is. That explains everything that there is to explain about the collocation options screen and so that is the end of this tutorial. Thanks for listening.